Hey you guys, I'm Moshan and today I wanted to uh, show you a little bit around uh, Lara VR and I think the best way to do that is to um, try and create something uh, uh, approaching a song and then uh, you can see how you go about doing that in Lyra uh, and as you'll probably discover as well it's a little bit different from uh, uh, what you might be used to if you've made music elsewhere. Um, if you've never made music before, well, the place that I suggest you start is uh, with a, one of these controllers and the, the one that I have in mind is this guy called the Auto Player. So um, keep in mind that in Lyra at this point with a Vive you only have these two mallets. So um, it's very really hard to play chords. Uh, um, what, what you could do is I guess uh, arrange notes close enough together that when you strike them they all ring sympathetically, that works. Um, but this is really what the audio player is for, to let you play chords. So I'm going to get a uh, synthesizer sound here. Uh, let me bring this start note. Um, these start notes are where your sequence starts, and you can create as many of them as you like. Um, so you can uh, use these to actually arrange your space if you want to move a, you know, one looping section a bit further away, then create a new uh, start note for it, and then uh, you don't have lines running through through your composition. Um, so more square waves. Uh, okay, I'm gonna. By the way, you can close this menu in world. The actual menu never disappears; it's always in world. But you can uh, close the bulk of it by hitting. So right now we're on the library, and then triggering on the library again will close it. So it's out of your way. So what the auto player does is it. Uh, it creates chords. So if I play C, for example, it will um, uh, change the pitches of these uh, nodes to the ones that uh, fit in the scale. So here, for example, C, D minor, A minor, F, okay, back to C. And um, right now, for our song that we want to create now, I'm going to change it to a different key because otherwise we always work in the key of C and it gets. Uh, Bit repetitive so right now we're going to be in the key of E and you will have noticed that all these uh, uh, other uh, chord names have changed as well to be related to the root key of E so the root key is the one with a circle around it there we go so now we're in the key of E um, and uh, you can hear I'm, actually I'm on chord mode now uh, you can switch to strum mode which is more like a guitar um, you can set the speed of that strum over here on the on the LCD display. So uh, let's make it a bit shorter. Oops, it wrapped around. So it's much faster. Or the other extreme is here, which is really slow. But um, let's not sync to the tempo in any way. Uh, to sync to the tempo, you will want to be in the arpeggiator mode. Um, and right now, you don't hear it because the arpeggiator mode only works when the sequencer is running. Um, okay, so we have our auto player set up. Let me bring in a, an audio loop um, to use as a drum backing. So let me find something that uh, will sound nice in this case. This is in your loop message folder. So you have the loop message folder that is um, audio loops that uh, we, uh, loop message provided us with, and that comes with uh, with Lyra. And then in your Lyra folder is where you uh, find recordings that you make here on the on the help menu. Um, they go go sit here. So let's find a drum loop. Um, let's have a look. Uh, here we go. Oh, kind of a straight rock kind of a beat like that. Um, the tempo on this, let's see, was 115. I can see it up here on the name uh, 115. So I need to set the sequencer, the Lyra sequencer, to that same tempo. So I'll change the BPM to 115 as well. And that means uh, that the arpeggiator will be in sync with this drum loop. By the way, to start, start and stop a drum loop, tap once to start, tap again to stop. And if you want to re-trigger, you tap it with the trigger held down. So start it, hold the trigger, and. your re-trigger stop it and now to start it in sync with a se uh, sequencer I want to link it up uh, let me show you a quick way by the way to link stuff up um, 
if you have a start note, well, uh, it doesn't work for the notes because the notes can go either direction. And uh, if you were to do this, you wouldn't know which direction you meant to go. But start notes only go out. So you can take a start note and just touch it to the, to the note that you want to uh, link it to. So now when I play the sequencer, you will hear the auto player, uh, the arpeggiator playing in sync with that drum loop. Now let's uh, add another loop, and this time I am going to use a different method. So I'm going to uh, draw it in by hand. Let's take this, uh, say this mirror by sound, um, and I'm going to first edit on it to change our key to the key. I believe we were in the key of E. That's right, so key of E. So I'm going to change here in the edit mode. I'll go to key, uh, and I swipe uh, up and down to get to the great key. So I was in C, so I should swipe up to E. Um, by the way, right and left will change those guys, the scale. But I want to be in E major. And uh, I need to also change the pitch on this guy. So here, it's in the key of E now. So if I were to play this uh, sequence now with our arpeggiator, And I change the pitch on this. You'll hear that it's uh, in in sync and in in the same key. I'm going to use my clone tool, and uh, uh, I'm going to make a copy of this note by using the clone tool, pulling the trigger, and I get this small version of that. Oops, I touched it. I get the small version of that note sitting here on my controller. And now when I uh, pull the trigger some anywhere in space, it's going to create this. Uh, same node. If I uh, place it on the same height, it's going to be the same pitch. And if I, it's lower, it's, it's going to be lower. So, right, it, it was uh, E. And there are your E's. And if I, you can go up the scale like that or down like that. Also, when you place it and pull the trigger, you can you can change the the uh, pitch on it as you as you place it. So I've got the trigger held down as I placed it and I haven't released it yet. And now I can do that. So I made a whole bunch of them now. Let me just delete them. So I'm going to use my beam selector to select them all. And the beam is here on your um, grip. And the beam is also important because the beam is your teleport. So if you touch this beam to the ground, you get this circle. And that's your teleport point. And if I release the grip now, I've teleported to this spot. Whoops, okay, the sequence. Here we go. Come back. Okay, so uh, I did that because I wanted to delete all of these guys. Okay, they were selected. I go into the erase mode on my flower menu and gone. Okay, next, uh, let's make a little pattern with this. By the way, if I do that while the sequencer is running, and I, um, I can go into record mode here and it will record. Because I'm in uh, this green clone mode, uh, here on the hilt menu, your uh, record has changed to one with little notes on it. And that means when, when I'm playing and recording like this now, it's going to actually remember the, it's going to link them up and it's going to uh, remember the tempo that I uh, placed them at. So let's see if that works. I haven't tried this for a bit, so let's see if I can make it work. Let's see if that worked. Uh, it worked. <laughs> it's not particularly uh, musical, so let me get rid of that. I'm just rather free handed. So. Okay, that should work. Let me link them all up. Uh, link mode is over here, the pink one, and just hold the trigger down and and uh, touch through them, and it will create the links for you. Oh, I missed one. Uh, you can delete the link, by the way, like that. And uh, let's get this one too, and delete this one. Let's see what we got. 
So this link was uh, a little weird. It's uh, one bar long, so let's just slide it down to zero, so it will start immediately. Uh, I'm not a, really a fan of what I'm hearing, so <laughs> that's better. Start on the right pitch uh, there. So one thing that I really like to do in Lyra is I have these patterns that are not uh, exactly uh, they don't make a neat bar. So what I mean by that is if I were to delete uh, those and just make, say, four, it will repeat around and, and the same notes will always fall on the same uh, steps in the, you know, on, on the loop, on the beat that I get from the loop. So the way that you can uh, get away from that is by making, uh, making different uh, numbers of notes instead. So instead of four, I have five. It means this this pattern is going to kind of shift over uh, over the loop. You know, it's not going to uh, the notes are not going to land on the same spot every time in the loop. Yeah. So something that you can uh, keep in mind as you experiment. So let me link this uh, back in. I wonder if I ended up with. Okay, so um, another thing that we can do with this uh, is we can uh, actually record the audio. Um, let's give this song a name so that when we record audio, it will record the name of the song and everyone just say untitled. So to do that, I'm going to save the song. Uh, it suggested the name of South, right? You can randomize the name uh, there. Oh, I still have this camera soloed. Here we go. Off, no solo. Uh, solo it so you can see this for a second. Okay, so you can see the name there and uh, you can pick random names by just say ran picking random name. Ran randomized name again. Uh, so here we have the stupidity of surprising. How about don't carry her now or transvest or strength in December or misery to the 10th. Don't know her now. How she sounds. Let's go with how she sounds for now. That's our the name of our song. I'm going to save it. So now when I record audio, it's going to record uh, the audio under that title, how she sounds. And what I'm doing now is just taking out these nodes um, because I don't actually want to uh, hear it while I record that. So I'm going to mute. I've muted all but this loop. So now uh, I've switched to the move uh, tool. And now when I record, it will be you don't see the notes on there. Now it's going to record audio. Let me do that. And what that should have done is made a very neat uh, two bar recording of this loop. So I'm going to erase this link so it again doesn't play when I start. And now we have silence. Good. So now let's go to our import library where we got that uh, loop master's loop before. And I'll go to our Lyra folder. And there we go, how she sounds. That's the recording that we just made. And there's the waveform of it. And I can pull the trigger to bring that into the world. Nice. And the reason you might want to do that over having the nodes in the world is that, uh, well, it's a little neater because uh, you don't have all of that. You just have the single one. Uh, and also because you can add effects to it globally to the whole pattern. Whereas if you were to do it um, individually on these nodes, um, it, uh, the, the actual effect would only be on this, this node. So if I play that pattern, uh, let me yeah, think it up again so we can hear it. Uh, it's also you know, good for interesting effects if you want to do that. Only one of the nodes in the uh, in that loop pattern as, a, as an effect. I mean, that's also interesting, but uh, oops, to let you hear what that sounds like.
as opposed to this one where I made the audio loop now and applied an effect and now you heard on on the whole pattern because it's a, an audio loop. Okay, so with that then I can actually, well, the one thing that I can do with this loop that I've got here is uh, I can do a pitch uh, change, just to delete these uh, effects. I can do a pitch change on all of these nodes so that I have two related patterns, but uh, that are not the same. So uh, let me play this. Oops, let me link this guy so we can hear them both at the same time. Uh, let's link it like this. So what I wanted to do was pitch shift this loop. So what I'm going to do is select all of those nodes and then go to edit and then change the pitch on one of them and it will change the pitch on all of them. Oh, you know what I think would be nice is if we alternate these uh, different pitches. So let me make another copy of this like that. I selected them all and then with a the clone tool I made a copy. Um, and let me just not play this one for a second and uh, rather link this one up and change the pitch on it. Okay, so now we have both of those. And then what I can do is I can alternate by doing like so. This one's going to run around da, 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 until it gets to here where it's supposed to loop. And then what I'm going to do is erase the link there and then go to the other pattern instead and uh, erase this one and then link this last one that should have gone made the loop, link it back to this one. So now we're going to get first this pattern and then that pattern like that. So let's hear that. Uh, pretty, I think. So let's um, switch our uh, unmute our loop that we had here, the drum loop. And let's also put our uh, notes back in the auto player and play. Okay, so we didn't uh, end up making a song per se, but um, at least this gives you uh, a beginning of an idea how uh, making music in Lyra is a little bit different from what you may have uh, encountered before. So thanks so much for watching, uh, and I hope uh, you enjoyed it. I'm Morshan signing off, and uh, I'll be back with more on uh, how you make music in Lyra soon. <laughs>